Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Design Your Own Airplanes. For those of you who are new to the channel, these videos are dedicated to explaining and demonstrating aerospace engineering principles so that you can design and build your own model airplanes that fly. In an earlier video, we learned how to build an easy and inexpensive glider, like this one, that you can use to experiment with different airplane designs. If you haven't built one yet, I've put a link in the description to the build video. Now, I have to apologize here because I told you that in this video, we would be learning to design planes to fly as far as possible. However, it's become clear that there's one more subject we need to cover first, and that is the Reynolds number. I initially thought that this subject was beyond the scope of these videos, but it's turned out that I was mistaken. In this video, we're going to learn three things. What the Reynolds number is, how to calculate it, and how it affects the flight performance of our planes. We'll end the video with a demonstration of how the Reynolds number affects the distance that our planes can fly. Over the last few videos, we've been learning about lift and drag coefficients. Until now, we've been assuming that the drag coefficient depends on the shape and orientation of an object, such as how objects that are streamlined have lower drag coefficients than those that are not. The situation is actually much more complicated than this. In addition to the shape and orientation of an object, the drag coefficient depends on several other variables as well. These include the size of the object, the airspeed, the density of the air, and the viscosity or stickiness of the air. That's a lot of variables to keep track of when we're trying to determine the drag coefficients of our planes. But what if there was a way to make this easier and just mash all those variables together into one big variable? Well, it turns out there actually is. We can combine all these variables into one big variable, called the Reynolds number, using the equations shown here. The Reynolds number is a convenient way to keep track of all of these variables at once, so we don't have to deal with each of them individually. The first thing we'll notice is that increasing the speed increases the Reynolds number. Likewise, a longer characteristic length results in a higher Reynolds number as well. For airplanes, the characteristic length is usually chosen to be the cord length of the airfoil. The density and viscosity of the air depends on the temperature and the pressure. I've put a link in the description to the website Engineering Toolbox, where you can find the values for different air densities and viscosities for different air temperatures and altitudes. To summarize, small airplanes flying slowly have low Reynolds numbers, and big airplanes flying fast have high Reynolds numbers. This chart shows the approximate Reynolds numbers we'll be working with for different cord lengths and speeds of our planes. While these values, shown along the bottom, may seem like very high numbers at first, they are actually quite low. Full-size airplanes usually have Reynolds numbers in the millions, or even billions. Now that we know how to calculate the Reynolds number, let's take a look at how it affects our planes. The first thing to point out is that the Reynolds number does not affect the lift coefficient. Since the induced drag coefficient is dependent on the lift coefficient, it is not affected by the Reynolds number either. The situation is different, however, for the parasite drag coefficient. In this graph, we can see that at lower Reynolds numbers, the parasite drag coefficient increases significantly. Increasing the Reynolds number, however, reduces the parasite drag coefficient. This means that you can reduce the parasite drag coefficient by designing planes with greater cord lengths, and by designing them to fly faster. As we learned in our video about basic glider physics, planes with lower drag coefficients fly further. We can demonstrate the difference by comparing two planes with different Reynolds numbers. Each plane has the same aspect ratio and an identical design, except the one with black stripes is two and a half times larger. The small plane with a low Reynolds number was only able to fly about two-thirds of the way across the gym at most. The larger plane with a higher Reynolds number, however, was able to fly almost all the way across the gym. This experiment demonstrates how you can reduce your parasite drag coefficient and make your planes fly further by designing them to be larger and by designing them to fly faster, which we talked about in our video about lift force. That wraps it up for this video. 
We've learned that the parasite drag coefficients of our planes depends on several variables, that these variables can all be mashed together into one big variable called the Reynolds number, and that larger and faster planes have higher Reynolds numbers, less parasite drag, and can fly further. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on how to design your own airplanes, and thanks for watching.